the universities in the US they scrutinize your profile very holistically it's not going to be your scores or just your sop or just your letters of recommendation it's going to be everything the entire package hi taruna welcome to the yocket connect series first of all thanks a lot for giving us your time and uh, i'm hoping uh, the interaction that we have today will definitely help a lot of viewers watching us so i would like to begin first understanding about your background hi shanan super happy to be here today so to give you a brief, very brief background so i did my undergraduate degree back in 2016 uh, i did electronics and communication engineering from uh, jp university based out of solon in himachal and once i graduated um, i was really passionate about telecommunications i did like a lot of electives you know and uh, in that in my final semester and i decided i'm going to go ahead be you know pursue a full time job in telecommunications itself so i started working as a network engineer at ericsson based out of noida and that was from 2016 to 2019 and i am super happy to be a you know to to get an opportunity to work in the industry before i moved to the us because that really shapes you know what do you want to do next right I, i i enjoy more i when there's like a collaboration with, with between my team members when i share my experiences while i learn from those for from their experiences so uh, that, that's the time when i decided that i'm going to go ahead pursue a degree which will nurture my leadership skills my managerial skills and that's when i came across this program uh called masters of engineering management so there's a there's a organization called MEMPC which is masters of engineering management program consortium so it has a list of all the good universities you know which provide like a great MEM program so that's how like i shortlisted i kind of like finalized that okay this is what i want to do and uh this is going to be a next step in my career so uh the next question i have over here right after hearing the name of your courses why mem and why not an mim or an mba for me i decided that uh, you know when it comes to when i was exploring the mem pro, uh, like the curriculum uh, it was a check mark for all the courses that i wanted to learn okay i want to learn project management it's there i want to learn product development it's there i want to learn finance marketing it's there right so because it's like a big decision you have to really think through you know and when i when it came to mim or mba mba was out of scenario because i it was really too expensive and i kind of wanted to like you know do something which has like a you know good rate return on on my investment right so uh, i don't know for me it was like out of scope kind of a thing based on the finances itself and when it comes to mem and mim the mem program was more intriguing to me when it come to the coursework because i did not want to like solely do technical courses but i wanted to you know pursue a career which which enables me to be a jack of all all trades over like uh you know just like getting expertise in one particular domain and i think like mim provides you that particular niche but over mem it kind of opens up a lot of pathways to different uh, you know career paths you can be a consultant you can be a program manager you can be a product manager you can be a data analyst a business analyst so you see like the the options are you know th- they are never ending options uh again there could be a debate around this so i would want to know mm-hmm. what's your opinion it's uh, generally advised that when you go for your masters it's better to specialize in something so that that specialization helps you to find a job going forward but what you mentioned right now you know the uh, the kind of exposure mem gives you it teaches you a bit of everything and you're exposed to all the uh, different activities that exist out there either in the uh, technical side of it or in the business side of it so my question being that uh, doing an mem course did it ever uh, give any hindrance to you in terms of finding a job or in fact it was much easier to find a job because you had an exposure to all these activities what was your experience like so i'll go step by step on this so when you just start your mem program you are bombarded with so many different things right so you are learning marketing do you want to be a product ma- marketing manager you don't know right uh, do you want to be a project manager you don't know so it kind of gives you the initial exposure that you know 
you you want to when you come here you want to try and test different things before you finalize what you really want to do getting skills in one particular domain is important i do not deny that it is really critical but if you just look at the skills of what of what a program manager does right so i think whatever decision you are making whatever program you are choosing just make sure that it will impart you the skills that are needed for that particular career right so if i say you want to be a product manager build the program provide you or impart you all the skills that are needed to be a product manager you know and it's not just that it has to go uh, it it has to align with the previous experiences that you have had right so it has to be a very i would say holistic decision like when it comes to finalizing your program but uh, I know, like uh, people say different things about different things, right? If if I if I wanted to be a program a software engineer, I would definitely get an expertise in one particular domain. If I wanted to, if I want to be data analyst, I would not go go for an MEM. I would rather go for a masters of data science, right? And so on, so on and so forth. Like every every other profession has its own expertise, but MEM program is specially curated for people who are interested in becoming a program manager, product manager. consultant business analyst and career paths like this uh i also want to understand is mem a stem degree in the us yes absolutely uh, so i think this is a suggestion to everybody who is considering like doing a masters in the us do make sure that you pick up a stem course uh, like and again it can depend like it can vary from person to person but if you really want to explore the industries here in the us if you really want to gain that work experience i do do recommend picking up or listing the stem course because the 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 benefit that you'll get out of it is that once you finish your masters degree or your bachelor's degree you do get like a one year extension right which is your opt period uh, and then after that you get a stem opt extension which is again another two years so you get to like work for a total of 3 years here in the states uh, when you pick up a stem program which were the other universities besides duke that you considered for this particular course so i ended up applying to seven universities and i ended up getting admits to six of them so uh, some other universities that i applied to was university of southern california uh, northeastern university uh, northwestern university Uh, I also applied to UT Dallas, but that was for a different course. Uh, it was similar to MEM, but not MEM exactly. Uh, and then I also ended up applying to Purdue, and uh, I, I didn't get into Purdue. So uh, I, it's very competitive, and um, yeah, I think those were the universities that I applied to. But I just want to mention that out of all these universities. uh duke was my number one preference it was like my dream university and i never thought i'll be able to get into it unless i got into it so you know it was like a long shot for me i was like okay let me just go ahead and apply right uh i don't know if i'll get into it or if i won't uh but it was just a leap of faith that i took and it ended up really well now given the fact that this was a stem course how soon were you able to find a job after you graduated It's a wonderful question. You'll hear so many stories when it when it comes to you know job searching in the U.S. And again, there is no one solution fits all kind of a, you know scenario. Like everybody is going through his or her own journey. Everybody is going to get you know uh, everybody is going to land up in a job through a different uh, channel. So like there are different channels, right? For me, even though I picked up a STEM course. I was right in the middle of the pandemic, you know, when all this mess started, right? So, uh it was definitely challenging, but it was not impossible, right? So, you have to be very persistent, committed, right? And um uh, I would like to discuss a little bit or touch a little bit about how what are the different channels in which you can like land opportunities in the US, right? So, for me, um I was fortunate enough to get an internship during my summer. So and I think in the US internships are the easiest way to get a full time job right so when you get an internship you can prove yourself your work can demonstrate like what skills you have what capabilities you have and I think that's like the easiest and the most smooth way of transitioning to a full time role 
right so you build those connections at your workplace you know you deliver great projects uh, during your three month tenure and uh, i think that that's really the key that that can help you get a full time job easily right and secondly things have worked differently for different people right some will tell you cold applications help them you know just going out doing a lot of applications on linkedin that helps out helps you land up in uh, in some interviews and then you can just convert those interviews to full time that's one channel and then for for others it may be networking you know just uh, having friends or friends or you know just be finding people of your interest on linkedin or find finding people of your interest through other events like career uh, you know career events or conferences so it can be different for different people you know like internship is one of them networking is another one and then just doing cold applications so i would not say just sticking to one of them i would say just go all out try as many op- options as you can uh, you know just keep all your uh, options open just don't hesitate to try anything new right just uh, go out give your 100% and you will definitely land up a job i have seen very few people who do not land up a job in the us if you are really dedicated really focused really committed so uh, there's there's this book by chetan bhagat uh, three mistakes of my life so i like to tweak that question and ask you that if i have to ask you three mistakes of your study abroad life uh, what would those be anything that might help any prospective student who's planning to study abroad in the next intake or any intakes coming forward and they should not repeat them even if they're not three that's fine but just wanted to list a few things that you experience that you you would suggest uh, you know as a senior to them that please do not repeat this great question i must say that's like a really chosen question <laughs> so uh, so let me start with one and let's see uh, i i can like uh, you know transition to the other two so one thing that you know i reflected and it was once i finished my masters degree at duke right so i think i was really engaged in getting that bigger duke experience and that, and i was like networking with people outside of my program but not inside my program so i would really suggest and uh, and it was just me right okay it's not like everyone but i would really suggest that devoting equal amount of time not just like exploring opportunities and people outside of your program but also inside right build that bond have strong relationships with your peers uh while you are studying abroad uh, if i had more time out of my studies i would definitely build those connections as well i remember like when i was starting my journey right like yorkit was super helpful i found so many of my you know batch mates from yorkit and then we were like when we came here we were like oh i met you on yorkit and then we were like going through those messages again and you know it it really helps because you feel you do not have a network you don't know whom to talk to but then yorkit is there right and then you are like oh this person has a similar profile just like me and he got an admit from this university which is also my dream university right so i remember like yorkit has been helpful in so many ways and not just that like when it came to finances and stuff right like um um i didn't directly like go through yorkit because i had already managed it to prodigy but i also know like yorkit had like a collaboration with prodigy and it you know kind of gives you that uh, push to you know just like take that leap of faith just go because your finances are sorted right now with prodigy coming into the play right but yeah it has been helpful on so many fronts so and secondly uh, when i was in india i i was weighing between different uh, universities so i had this notion that public universities are not as great as private universities right and uh, not not just because they're cheaper or they are like less tuition it's it's nothing like that but i had this notion there's nothing like that please do not have this notion ever in your mind that you know private private or the ivy leagues are going to be better i know the experience will be different the entire experience so like if i studied at duke the experience is really good like you know you get to uh, explore 
how great duke is in sports you know you you get to be in the games you uh, have so much fun to do right experience will be different from dif- for different universities but at the same time do not have any bias for public or private universities so so my reason for duke was definitely it's my dream right but uh, just try to like uh, remove that bias uh, if you ever have that so the final and the foremost thing is don't ever sell yourself short never do that like you know uh, when i was applying for my jobs like sometimes i used to think why companies like you know microsoft google uh you know netflix or all, all these like fan companies right why would they hire me but that's not true you know when i remove that bias from my mind i i have interviewed with all these companies right uh and we were going through a tough time it things might not align like then it might align now or in future right but uh do not sell yourself short keep your mind very open always like shoot for the best always you know try to really even if your mind says that you're not like the right fit for that job or even if your mind says you're not not the right fit for that company like you know they have like high standards do not let that overshadow your mind just go for it just apply just you know interview you never know what's going to end up like you know it's just like landing up in your dream university you might land up in your dream company or your dream job so yeah that would be like the third thing that i would say